Good morning. I would like to bring the May 5th, 2021 Planning Advisory Commission meeting to order. And if you would, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. And if you will, turn around. The flag's on the outside right now because the other one is downtown. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. If you will, please uh, silence or turn off your cell phones this morning. Uh, and today we're operating under much different circumstances, as you, as you all are aware. Um, we have some commissioners that are watching by television and by YouTube and will be forwarding questions to me via text. We, all, we will also have citizens calling in via phone with questions or comments. So we ask those watching here and by other means to be patient with us as we move these cases forward. The phone number in which to call in is 706-225-3937, and it's uh, scrolling on the screen right now. And I remind those in the audience and those watching on television that this is the first hearing of any rezoning text change or special exception request brought for us today. We will first hear a reading of the staff report for the case by planning staff and ask the applicant then to provide a brief overview of the request. We will then give the opportunity for anyone in the audience to speak for or against that said request or to inquire about the said request. The commissioners will have any needed discussion on the case. Once a motion is made and seconded by the commission, a vote will take place and a recommendation will be rendered the case will go back to the planning department for their independent recommendation. If a favorable recommendation is given, then the case is forwarded to the city council with the two independent recommendations. If the planning department makes a recommendation for denial, the applicant will then have 10 days from a receipt of a letter stating the denial to notify the clerk of council that they are requesting to be placed on city council's agenda. The City Council of Columbus will hold a public meeting, and that's called the first reading. Said council will consider the case, review our recommendations and the planning department recommendations, and hear discussion on the matter. Second, um, council will make a final decision at a second public meeting, and that's called the second reading, and there they will vote on it. Okay. Our first agenda item this morning is to approve the minutes of previous meetings, and I'm going to bring those forward right now. I have the minutes from uh, April 7th, which was held Wednesday, April 7th, and then we also have minutes from April 21st. Uh, is there any discussion, any changes? Has everybody had an opportunity to take a look at the minutes? Okay. So you didn't see any need for change or anything like that? So we'll consider those accepted. All right, for those in the audience that came for 4590 Woodruff Road, um, if you're here for 4590 Woodruff Road, I just want to let you know that case has been pulled, and um, they, have, they have decided not to go forward with that, so I don't want to waste your time with you sitting here. Um, also, case our third case, which is a notice to rezone 0.45 acres at 30, 8238 Cooper Creek Road, has been delayed to the next meeting on May the 19th. And if you're here for that meeting, um, we, will, we will resume that one on the 19th of May. Um, and it's due to uh, sign issues out there on the site. So that leaves us with one, two, three, four. Five, six cases for today. We got four zoning cases and we've got two special ex ex exception cases. So we'll move on to actually case number two first. And this is a request to rezone 1.08 acres of land located at 1500 12th Street. Current zoning is RMF2, residential multifamily two. Proposed zoning is RO, residential office. The proposed use is apartments. Walker Reynolds Bickerstaff Jr. is the applicant. The property is located in Council District 7. Ms. Woodson, and uh, we'll hear from planning staff first. Yes, sir. Uh, general land use is consistent for planning area D. Um, the current land use designation is multifamily, futures, mixed use. It is compatible with existing land uses. 
The property does not lie within the floodway and floodplain area. The developer will need an approved drainage plan prior to an issuance of a site development permit if a permit is required. Property is served by all city services. There'll be no tra traffic impact. The, the site shall meet the codes and regulations of CCG for commercial, for residential usage. There'll be no school impact. The site shall include a category C buffer along all property lines bordered by the, by the SFR3 zoning district. Those three options under category C are 20 feet with a certain amount of canopy trees, understory trees, shrubs, ornamental grasses per 100 linear feet. 10 feet with a certain amount of shrubs, ornamental grasses per 100 linear feet in a wood fence or masonry wall, 30 feet undisturbed natural buffer. Uh, no Fort, uh, Fort Bannon recommendation, no DRI recommendation. Um, the surrounding zoning to the north is SFR3, to the south is NC, to the east is RMF2, to the west is SFR3. 45 property owners within 300 feet of the subject's properties were notified of the rezoning request. The planning department received no calls in or emails regarding the rezoning. Um, as far as the additional information, por portions of the existing apartments burned down. To be able to rebuild them at their previous number of units, they must rezone to meet the UDO standards. Okay. Commissioner, do you have any questions? Mr. Dudley? Just a clarification. Um, the reason they have to be... Uh, Put in the correct zoning category is that the apartments were built before the UDO was put in force, and so they were grandfathered in. That, that's correct. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any other questions, commissioners? All right. Mr. Reynolds Bickerstaff, can you please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, actually, my name is Richard Mobley. I'm uh, commercial director of uh, Bickerstaff Farm Real Estate. And Reynolds couldn't make it today. He's actually at home with, with COVID now, so he uh -oh. we don't want him here. No. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but we do we do manage the property for, for the owners who actually live in New York. And they're like I said, they were built in 1969 with 31 units. Um, they caught fire back in July of last year, and in order to rebuild back remodel the ones that got burned, we, we need to rezone it to this RO. Okay, do you plan on adding or deleting, uh, or is it gonna be the same? Uh, there will not be any more than the 31 units that are there now. Okay. And we do not plan on going any higher. Okay, all right, so it'd be the same, basically the same thing going back on a different, on the same footprint. Just, just new, yes. Okay, all right. Commissioners, do y'all have any questions? Mr. Mobley? Anyone? Yes, ma'am. If you can please press your speaker button there. Thank you. Would these be rented for the same price? Or would they be upscales apartment or how would they be? We haven't really drilled down on the on the rent rates as of yet, but knowing the costs that are involved right now in order to make the property cash flow the way it should. I would imagine that rents would need to go up a little bit. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other any other questions, commissioners? All right. Thank you, Mr. Mobley. All right. Is there anyone in the audience like to speak for this case? Please come forward at this time. Is there anyone that would like to come speak against this or have comments about this? Please come forward at this time. If you would uh, state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Steve Gunby and I live at 1110 Dinglewood Drive in Columbus and have owned that house and lived there for 34 years. My house backs up. In other words, my rear property line adjoins this project uh, along with the houses on each side of me. Um, having lived there for 34 years, I'm an eyewitness to the uh, impact this apartment complex has had on the area from the time when it was young bankers, school teachers to uh, criminals. So if we can improve the complex, I'm all for it but I'm not convinced that rezoning the area where the complex is located is the solution that 
would help the area or be in compliance really with the intent of the UDO. Uh, personally, I'll be quite candid, I wish it would just go away. That would make our neighborhood a better neighborhood. Um, but I can uh, recognize the reality of the situation. It was there when I bought my house and when the neighbors bought theirs. And I empathize that it's burned up and they've got an investment that they need to recover. Um, but rezoning it would allow a lot more than rezoning it to RO would allow it to uh, do a lot more than what's there. RO, as compared to RMF2, would allow a 10-story building. RO would allow 100%, uh, I don't know the term, maximum lot coverage for RO is 100% compared to 40% for RMF2. Um, RO is intended, according to the zoning uh, UDO or, or the residential zoning district RO, the purpose is to provide a transitional buffer between more intense commercial zoning districts and less dense residential zoning districts. Except for two businesses on Winton Road, which adjoin the south side of this apartment complex, everything around it is residential. Everything to the west, and I will point out that your staff report contains an existing uh, land use map that's entirely wrong. Uh, here is the property that's the subject of the application. It, brown means it's multifamily, according to the legend, but everything to the north and everything to the west is single family residence. To the uh, east is multifamily, to the northeast is multifamily, and then this shows commercial, and I don't need to get into it, that's not, there's one commercial, there's a doctor's office, and this is multifamily, there's a, a small office, and the rest of this is either single family or multifamily. But everything in our neighborhood has always been single family. So everything to the west and the east. These two parcels are the only two commercial, this is even single family residential over here. And they may, may be zoned differently, but I'm talking about existing use. Your goal, according to the future land use map, is this. That's what the whole intent of the UDO and y'all's planning advice is to accomplish this. More residential and less commercial. Otherwise, this would all be red. And if you rezone this to RO, you're going, unless you have uh, restrictions to make it what it, RMF used to be, wh whatever that was, um, you're going to allow commercial uses abutting within probably less than 50 feet of single family residential neighborhoods. So it seems to me that rather than rezoning an acre of land, which would allow a lot of uses that the applicant and the owner do not intend, why can't we keep it multifamily, which restricts commercial uses, and have an exception and let them build back what was there? In other words, if you put what was there, I don't think people like me have a right to complain quite frankly, because it was there when I bought my house. And it would hopefully be in better shape than it is now, or was before it burned down. But to rezone the area, I just foresee more uh, complaints, more non-conforming uses to what is appropriate for the neighborhood, but allowed under RO unless 
y'all advise council or whoever puts the restrictions and says you can only build back what was there. And that's exactly what the application says they want to do. It says, we are requesting the property be rezoned to RO, which would allow the owners to rebuild the damaged units. Keep the zoning the way it is and let them rebuild the units. That's all they want to do. They don't want commercial uses. They don't want uh, uh, 43 units, which is what RO allows. They don't want a 10-story building because it allows 150 feet. Just keep it RMF2, but give them an exception because they were grandfathered in. And I don't, is that possible? Well, we can, we can place limits on, in our motion and make recommendation to council. Um, and I do understand where you're coming from. Now tell me, the, the, the difference between what is currently there, which is RMF2, and RO, the improvements would be buffering over what it used to be, correct? I mean, there'd be more buffering around it. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you want to address it? I, it's already got some fencing up. Um, you'd have to go in there and bust up concrete to put in the 10 feet of, of um, shrubbery. Um, I don't know if we can... Um, Honestly, we'd have to look and see, check with codes and inspections to see if it could stay RMF 2 and do a condition that they could double the units because technically RMF 2 is only 16 units and they have 31. Huh. Um, that's why the ROs come along. So we can either look at going from RMF 2 to RMF 2 with conditions or we can go RO and limit the number of units limit the height to existing, and those conditions are permanent. You have to come back through here to get them lifted. Well, even if we went to RO, we, we could go ahead and put those limits on the RO, Yes, correct? you can put the limits on there. I just, with the RMF2 and, 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 and the, the setbacks and all that are different than RO and this building being from 1969 I don't know what all, it probably doesn't meet anything in RMF2 anymore. Okay. And also prior to 2005, despite your zoning, you could go get a variance for whatever you wanted to. Sure. And that's probably why it's got double the units because I don't think RMF2 has changed in density going back to at least 72. Okay. Commissioners, y'all have any other questions while we have Mr. Johnson? Does that answer your question? So what you're saying is we could actually condition it under RO to the current number of units and the current height and current mm -hmm. footprint in order. Current use? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. We, we, we can condition yeah. it any way we need to. And if, you know, that's a concern, we can certainly place that in our motion. My concern is that if you rezone it to RO, the burden is now on you to speculate or to cover or to anticipate everything that is allowed by RO that you don't want here, as opposed to keeping it the way it is and not allowing the other stuff. I'm okay with either one if you, we can trust that some future owner doesn't come back and say, well, when y'all authorized us to rebuild this, you forgot that we can do this, and you didn't condition it on that. Well, if we condition it, it, it passes from owner to owner until that subsequent No, I'm saying owner. if you exactly. didn't condition something because you overlooked it, right? then that owner doesn't have to come back here. They can just do it. Now people like me are going to say, wait a minute, they've got a, an office complex there oh, we forgot to condition it. They're not supposed to have that there. Well, I'm sorry you forgot. Now it's there. Now well, we, the can, burdens, we, no. can, we can put conditions in our motion, and we right. pass it on to council. And if council approves those conditions and so does and, and um, planning agrees, then it, that's the way it's written into the rezoning. If you can do broad conditions, in other words, replace what's there, 
That's, what they, that's the maximum they need to do, not other things that are allowed in an RO zoning area. Well, we can, we can condition it to be apartments only, and we can condition it to... 31 units. 31 units as, as before. Right. So, and, and no increase in height. Right. And that's what they say they'll do. Well, that's what they say they do, and we can but put it in our Unless motion. somebody restricts them from doing it, there's no, no way to enforce it. Gotcha. I'm, we understand. Should right. we ask the applicant for comments? Yeah, if we're going to. Okay. We're going to. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gumby. Mr. Mobley, did you have any other comments you wanted to make? Uh, no, I, I don't see a problem with us. Okay. Right. May I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. And who, who are you addressing? I am addressing uh, Mr. Mobley. Mr. Mobley, could you come back up to the podium, please? Will you completely take down what's there, or are you going to just repair the ones that were damaged in the fire? The, the goal is just to repair what needs to be re repaired. Will now, I, I'm not a construction guy, so I don't know exactly what's going to need to be done. Um, but again, the goal is just to just to fix what we've got there. Will there be like a facelift for the entire complex to make it look newer and better? Mm -hmm. And Ms. Brown, as Mr. Bobby said, he's substituting today. We had a conference call with uh, Mr. Becker's staff. Uh, they plan to just fill in what burned, and uh, some of it will be completely new construction, because right, I think, in the center where yeah, the hot spot was, there is no, the there's no repairing. Right, right. Um, so, and, but the other units are still, the okay. end units are functioning, so it should look the same. And has there ever been a privacy fence between the single family and because when we drove by we saw the chain link fence that's around it now but as far as the single family homes in the apartment complex is there any kind of a it's burned over 50 percent so it will trigger the buff ordinance so they will have to go back and put in a privacy fence okay okay thank you mr johnson thank you mr mobley and and, and do bear in mind the Everything within the RO zoning would have to be followed, you know, in addition to anything you add to the motion. So, is anyone else in the audience like to come speak on this case? Please come forward at this time. Yes, sir, if you would state your name and address for the record. Good morning. My name is Colonel Rob Choppa. I'm Steve Gumby's neighbor. I live at 1112 Dinglewood Drive. The back of our house see, it looks into the apartment complex. We've had several challenges that I wouldn't expect you would enjoy with your homes. Homes are built by families to keep traditions, to keep love, to keep honor. And that's what you want with your home. You don't want people on balconies exposing themselves to your wife. You don't want gunfire. You don't want loud music 20 hours a day, day and night. Your question about fences, all of the neighbors that abut that have had to build their own fences. So to bring the multifamily unit back and make it better, if that's your goal, I wish you well. I just hope you'd consider our home. Spent 31 years in the Army. We moved 20 times. This is our home. Our sons were commissioned officers there. We're going to retire. We're going to retire there. So we want our home to be like your homes, and we'd ask you to consider that as you make your decision. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else like to come speak for or against this case? Thank you. <laughs> All right, commissioners, uh, open the floor up for a motion this morning, and I think uh, we need to consider everything we've heard.
Mr. Dudley. Okay, in reference to application REZN 04210660, uh, located at 1500 12th Street, I move that we approve the request, placing conditions of the rebuilding the same number of apartments at the same height as was the case before the fire. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Do we, we want to, <coughs> excuse me, second? do we want to restrict that use to apartments only? Yes. Yes. Thank okay. You. I was going to get to that. All right. We have a motion on the floor to restrict the height, restrict it to apartment use only and to the number of units that's there. Plus they will have to follow the UDO with regards to the RO zoning. Is there a second? Do we have a second? Yes, we have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor to accept this uh, as written, please raise your right hand, as stated, I should say. All right, and all opposed? We got one opposed. One, two, three, four, five, four, and one against. All right, thank you very much. We move on to our next case. We're skipping number three that was on your agenda. Case number four is REZN-04-21-0664. This is a request to rezone 0 0.23 acres of land located at 181 North Lumpkin Road. Current zoning is RMF1, residential multifamily one. Proposed zoning is GC, general commercial. The proposed use is auto, truck, tire sales, and installation. Bianca Rodriguez de la Cruz is the applicant. This property is located in Council District 3, Huff. And uh, we'll hear from planning first on the uh, staff report. Yes, our general land use is inconsistent for planning area C. Current land use designation is single family residential. Future single family residential, it is compatible with existing land uses. The property does not lie within the floodway and floodplain area. The developer will need an approved drainage plan prior to an issuance of a site development permit if a permit is required. The property is served by all city services. Average annual daily trips will increase by 62 trips. If used for commercial use, the level of service will remain at a level B. The site shall meet the codes and regulations of CCG for commercial usage. There'll be no school impact. The site shall include a category C buffer along all property lines bordered by the RMF zoning district. Those three options on a category C are 20 feet with a certain amount of canopy trees, understory trees, shrubs, ornamental grasses per 100 linear feet, 10 feet with a certain amount of shrubs, ornamental grasses per 100 linear feet, and a wood fence or masonry wall. 30 feet undisturbed natural buffer. There was no Fort Benning recommendation, no deer I recommendation. The surrounding zoning to the north was RMF1, to the south is general commercial, to the east is RMF1, to the west is RMF1. 55 property owners within 300 feet of the subject property were notified of the rezoning request. The planning department received one call and or email regarding the rezoning and that was in opposition. All right, thank you, Mr. Renfro. Commissioners, do y'all have any questions? Planning this time. All right. Let's see. Ms. Bianca Rodriguez de la Cruz, are you in the here? Would you please come forward, state your name and address for the record, and tell us what your plans are for this site? Good morning to everybody. Uh, my English is not too good. My wife, she, she speaks very English, but she can't come because she's a little sick. And my plan, plan is to make a tire shop right there because we, we, we find this place. We really we try to make a, our own business. And I really try to make a good life for my family. And I really... <laughs> I don't know. So you're planning to use the existing building? No, sir. You're going to build a new building there? Yes, sir. Okay. What was, what was your first name again? My name is Israel Martinez. Okay. My wife's name is Blanca. All right. 
So basically, you're going to build a new building. Yes, sir. And how many bays? What, what are you planning to build there? Just only uh, try to build it, uh, make that building like um, just only one base. But like, um, I, can't remember, I can't remember exactly how what it is, but try to build the new one. Okay. All right. All right, commissioners, do y'all have any questions? This gentleman, yes, ma'am. Does he have to submit plans for his building before we approve this? He does not. He did submit the site plan for this property. Um, it was included in your packet. It's in the back. The building's actually 25 oh, okay. by 50 feet. Um, but as far as the site plans, that's, that's handled after rezoning. But then it would, the plans would have to be approved by codes in the city, right? It would be. Okay. okay. Any other questions, commissioners? And what type of building you plan to build? Is this going to be a type metal type building, yes, concrete sir. masonry? No, the most is for the used used tire and new tire. That's all. I mean, what is it going to look like when you finish? I know you got a picture in your mind. Mm, I really, I don't know. Just only uh, try to the, the beautiful place for the most can. Okay. All right. No other questions? Commissioners, Ms. Thomas, anybody? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak for this case? Please come forward. Does anyone like to speak against this case? Please come forward. And we just need one at a time unless you two are together. Are you two together? Yeah. Okay. Please state your names and addresses for the record, please. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jacqueline Moffitt. My address is 104 30th Avenue, Columbus, Georgia. Okay. And um, I am against this proposed um, tire shop, and I have signatures of residents in the area that are also against this proposed tire shop. The south side is already full of all different kinds of everything and everybody. And we feel that a tire shop on that one specific corner, which is really tight, is going to make things worse. We don't want it there. There are a lot of other places that they can get besides right there. It's bad enough we got people out there, well, young people really, not mature people, doing donuts in the road and running up and down the street and the store across the street, they're crowding in there, and we don't need more traffic in that area. Now, a lot of people that live out there, myself included, are quiet, elderly, you know, mature people out there, and we want our neighborhood to at least stay part of that way. Now, I don't have any um, a, a grievance against him trying to make a better life for his family, but not right there. The corner is tight, it is small, it is not going to be feasible, people going in and out, getting tires, in and out of the store. There's a four-way traffic light right there. There's a house over here, a house behind it, house across the street, house over here. No, leave it, leave it uh, family, or uh, what is it, R-E-M-F, whatever it is, leave it like it is. Because all these people, and a lot of the people on this list also attend the church that's right down the street. No, we don't want that in our neighborhood. Now, if it was going to be something that's going to benefit the neighborhood, most definitely. But that is not going to benefit the neighborhood. You got tires everywhere. You got snakes everywhere, rats, the whole nine yards. That building is going to collect everything. No, we don't want it in our neighborhood. Why can't they put it in their own neighborhood? That would be even better. Put it in your neighborhood. You want to build things better for your family? Put it in your neighborhood, not ours. Thank you. She wants Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Shannon Hubbard. I live at 3012 North Lumpkin Road, just right below where they're talking about building. And also, I'm opposed to that. Um, like Ms. Moffitt said, it is a heavy area for traffic. But I went on Victor Drive, and there are different buildings with better parking that uh, I think that they can look at. 
For one, it's the H Mart, that's for rent, and it has the parking space, and it will allow heavy traffic due to it being Victor Drive, they can easily get in and out. Also, the old Shoney's building, that's great for parking if they want to do a tire shop, but I'm very opposed to it. Okay. Oh, and also the old church's chicken building on South Lumpkin Road. <laughs> There's a, a building that they can use. Gotcha. Well, hang on, ladies. Uh, are there any questions from anyone here on the commission for you two? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Was there a house, oh, excuse me, um, this is uh, Moffitt. Was there a house there yes, at one time? Yes, there was a house there because I lived in it. <laughs> what As happened? Fact, my older daughter got pregnant, so yes, there was a house there. Okay. Any other questions? It was a single family home. Yes, it was. And that's what we're trying to keep the neighborhood, like this young man, like this young man was saying, a neighborhood, not all this other stuff. We, we don't need that out there. The neighborhood is nice and like it is. If you want to, you know, I don't have nothing against him. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I don't have anything we got, against we gotta him. We got to hear you. I don't have my ear nades yet. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't have anything against him building a better life for his family. I don't. But put it in your neighborhood. You know, put it somewhere in your neighborhood, not ours. That's all I'm saying. We want to keep our neighborhood a neighborhood, a neighborhood. not a commercial hood. So, that, and that's, that's what we're trying to do. And I spoke to Mr. Renfro mm -hmm. several times. He's very sweet and very kind, very polite. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. May I, may I ask a question? With you rezoning this for commercial, what does that do to the uh, property? Well, it, uh, Mr. Renfro, you want to address that? It... I mean, basically, help, general commercial is our most widely available um, uses category. So, I mean, tire shop is just one of the 150 or so things that he could technically put there unless it's conditioned. Um, as far as property values, I'm not a real estate person, but normally uh, general commercial in the surrounding area, the, the homes directly, re, uh, re, directly adjacent to it tend, tend, to, tend to fall. Okay. okay. So can that be taken in consideration on this? Because I've lived in my house for 17 years. I lived in mine 22 years. Okay. Okay. We'll take Thank all you. that into consideration. Plus, you, uh, if you would look up at the screens, that was the uh, petition that yes. they brought in, and I did manage to read what I could see. All right. Thank you all very much. All right. Anyone else that would like to come speak for or against? And please state your name and uh, address for the record. Good morning. Bruce Huff, City Council District 3, representing the people that are here this morning. Um, P.O. Box 1340, Columbus, Georgia, 31902. As Mr. Renfro stated, he did not receive a lot of phone calls because I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard from the neighborhood. Um, I want to uh, make mention to uh, is that, uh, Mrs. De La Cruz. Uh, I think she's not here this morning, but would like to offer sitting down with her and anyone else that represents her to see if we can get together on the better land use there. Uh, this area has been there since forever. I used to play ball there at the South Columbus Boys Club. I used to cut through. I still come through there probably three or four times a week because it's just a cut through from Casita Road, 30th Avenue, right over to Victory Drive in downtown. And the neighbors have worked really hard over the years to better the neighborhood, to get people in there, to uh, demolish some of the old houses and get better housing up. And they're really taking great care of the area. So I don't, I don't really see where this would be a good fit for the area. Um, Mrs. De La Cruz has done a great job in the area. She owns some other property down at the other end of North Lumpkin Road toward the Victory Drive in, and she's done some great things in the area. So I would like to see if we could sit down and talk about it and kind of put this on delay for a minute. Uh, I'd like to mention to you all, I'm very happy that 
I've been very empathetic over the last 10 years sitting where you sit, not knowing one day I'd be on this side. So I hope you take it all in this morning. Uh, the residents of the area, I'm sure they're shocked to see me here this morning. I just told them I would follow up. I didn't tell them. I was surprised that I showed up this morning. But uh, it's that important to me. Uh, There's a lot going on in the area. Columbus is growing. Uh, it's moving in the right direction. And we just need to be careful uh, what we place in these spots because we have some tire areas up on the Casita Road area, down on the Victory Drive area. So I thank you for listening this morning. Uh, and hopefully, if there's any way we can get this delayed, uh, we're definitely not for it. We're against it. And uh, see if we can get with the property owner and find a better fit for that particular address. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Ms. Thomas, uh, Mr. Huff, uh, Ms. Thomas has a question. <laughs> How are yes, you doing? How are you doing? The area that the young lady mentioned, are those also in your district? The area that she mentioned that could be available for the them to consider building the tire place there? Some of it is, and some of it's in Council of Woodson's district. We borderline each other. I'm on one side of uh, North Lumpkin Road, and Council of Woodson's on the other side. Uh, on Victory Drive side, I'm at, from racetrack down to the Captain D's coming there. Anything on the other side would be Council of Woodson. So some of the area possibility may be yes. in your area. Yes. And if he came back and they considered one of those areas which are already zoned for business, would that be a problem then? We just need to see what the location is. What the, the problem here this morning is if the residents, the residents right. don't want it right there of but, building their homes. But I think these were businesses that she mentioned that were no longer, you know, in business. Right. That's what, that's what I was – I'm with right. you on that, okay. on the – Representative here this morning, that's what I'm okay. saying. If we could get together, right. take that information, yeah. discuss it, and see if there's any way to uh, make that fit for their concerns. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak for or against this? Please come forward at this time. And that said, uh, commissioners, open the floor up for a motion regarding this case. I would like to make a motion Ms. to Weekly. delay. Okay, thank you. Um, REZN 04-210664, request to rezone 0 0.23 acres of land located at 181 North Lumpkin Road for further discussion with the council. Well, we, we need a motion as to whether we're going to accept or deny this one. Deny. Okay, and based on the comments made about the the resident the residents and the current configuration of the area. Good. Okay, we got a motion. Do I have a second? I have several seconds. All those in favor to deny this case, please raise your right hand. And it's unanimous. Thank you very much. All right. Next case is case number REZN0421, a request to rezone 0.34 acres of land located at 641 Veterans Parkway. Current zoning is GC, General Commercial. Proposed zoning is SFR4, single family residential 4. Proposed use is single family residential. Historic Columbus Foundation is the applicant. This property is located in Council District 7, Woodson. And we'll hear from uh, planning staff first, please. Uh, yes, sir. The general land use, <coughs> excuse me, is consistent for planning area D. Uh, the current land use designation is vacant. The future is mixed use. It is compatible with the existing land uses. The property does not lie within the floodway and floodplain area. The developer will need an approved drainage plan prior to an issuance of a site development permit if a permit is required. Property is served by all city services. Average annual daily trips will decrease by 19 trips if used for residential use. The level of service will remain level D. The site shall meet the codes and regulations for the CCG um, for residential usage. There'll be no school impact. The site shall include a, cat a category A buffer along all property lines bordered by general commercial zoning district. Those three options under category A. <coughs> Excuse me. 
are 20 feet with a certain amount of canopy trees, understory trees, shrubs, ornamental grasses per 100 linear feet, 10 feet with a certain amount of shrubs, ornamental grasses per 100 linear feet, and a wood fence or masonry wall, 30 feet under disturbed natural buffer. And there's no Fort Benning recommendation, no DRI recommendation. The surrounding zoning to the north is general commercial, south is GC, east is GC, west is historic. 40 property owners within 300 feet of the subject property were notified of the rezoning request. The planning department received no calls and or emails regarding the rezoning. Thank you, Mr. Renfro. Commissioners, do y'all have any questions of Mr. Renfro at this time? Anyone? All right. Do we have a representative of Historic Columbus Foundation? If you would, please come up and state your name and address for the record. My name is Justin Krieg. I live at 620 Front Avenue. I work for Historic Columbus. We purchased this property over two decades ago uh, with the intention of protecting an entrance to the historic district. And part of that effort um, was obviously to control the use of, of what came on that property. And with it currently being zoned as general commercial, we've got a desire to move it towards a residential zoning classification so homes could be built on the property. And that's our desire to rezone. Okay. Any questions, commissioners, Mr. Creek? Um, yes, you. The app, uh, the staff report listed uh, Kathy Williams, who I see in the audience, as um, one of your agents. As a matter of fact, so you have an arrangement in place with NeighborWorks for this property, or not NeighborWorks, but Miss Williams personally. Personally, uh, we have okay. a property under contract with Miss Williams, and so part of the sale, uh, a contingency of the sale, is to get the property rezoned from general commercial to uh, SFR4. Okay. Okay, thank you. That answer your question? Yes. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? All right. Thank you very much. All right. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to come up and speak for this case? Please do so at this time. Is there anyone that would like to come speak against this case? Please come up at this time. And nobody is moving. All right. Commissioners, the floor is open for a motion. I make right. a motion regarding case number REZN 04210697, uh, a request to rezone 0.34 acres of land located at 641 Veterans Parkway. Current zoning is general commercial. Pro proposed zoning is single family resident for the proposed use of single family residential. Historic Columbus Foundation is the applicant. The property is located in Council District 7. Okay. And we have a motion to accept to it. Accept it. Sorry. All right. Do we have a second? And we have a second here. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand to approve. And it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Next case. And this will be. Let's see, this is our last rezoning case. This will be case number REZN 04210750. This is a request to rezone 0 0.59 acres of land located at 502 15th Street. Current zoning is LMI, Light Manufacturing Industrial. <coughs> proposed zoning is UPT, which is uptown. The proposed use is mixed use. Parking lots, LLC is the applicant. This property is located in Council District 7, Woodson. And once again, we'll hear from the uh, planning staff on this case first, please. Yep. Yes, sir. The general land use is consistent for Planet Area D. The current land use designation is mixed use. The future is high density mixed use. It is compatible with existing land uses. The property does not lie within the floodway and floodplain area. The developer will need an approved drainage plan prior to an issuance of a site development permit if a permit is required. Property is served by all city services. There'll be no traffic impact. This shall meet the codes and regulations of CCG for commercial usage. There'll be no school impact, no buffer requirements, no Fort, Fort Benning recommendation, no DRI recommendation. The surrounding zoning to the north is UPT, south is UPT, east is LMI, light manufacturing and industrial, and west is UPT. 
35 property owners within 300 feet of the subject properties were notified of the rezoning request. The planning department received no calls in or emails regarding the rezoning. All right. Thank you, Mr. Renfro. Commissioners, do you all have any questions regarding this case? Uh, Mr. Renfro? All right. All right. Park and Lots, LLC, if uh, you would please come forward to uh, tell us what your plans are and if you would give us your name and address for the record. Good morning. My name is Haley Lyman. I live at 208 Chapel Street. I'm with the Cotton Companies. Oh. Sorry. My name is Haley Lyman. I live at 208 Chapel Street. I'm representing the owner of Parking Lots LLC. I'm with the Cotton Companies. We're a real estate development investment firm in Columbus, Georgia. Um, we are proposing to change the two parcels, which have historically been park parking lots. Um, as support for the surrounding manufacturers in the past years from LMI to UPT to be in conformance with the surrounding usage. Um, the proposed site will be for Fetch Park, um, which you might have heard about. It's been released that that will be the site for that. Um, and we will be redeveloping that block to support the surrounding offices and surrounding residential units in there to provide more amenities to that area. So this is for the dog park that we've already Correct. discussed here, okay? This is 0.59 acres, and the dog park itself will be comprised of 0.9 acres. Okay. Are you planning to take most of the parking lot up, or some of the parking lot up, or? Just some. Just some. And then the rest will be parking. Okay. All right, we added that to the UDO for this particular uptown classification in our last meeting. Commissioners, do you all have any questions of the applicant this morning? Anyone? All right. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Is anyone in the audience that would like to come forward and speak for this case? Please do so at this time and state your name for the record and address, please. My name is Christopher Woodruff. Uh, address is 1201 Front Avenue. I'm speaking in support of this uh, rezoning. I'm the adjacent property owner at lot 400A LLC and 1421 6th Avenue LLC. These are the properties that directly surround uh, to the south and east of the property, not to include Metro Powers uh, buildings. Okay. All right. Commissioners, y'all have any questions of Mr. Woodruff? All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All right. Anyone else like to speak for this case? Please come forward. Does anyone like to come speak against this case? Please come forward at this time. We've got a quiet crowd here today. All right. All right, commissioners, the floor is open for a motion. When it comes to REZN 04210750, a request to rezone 0.59 acres of land located at 502 15th Street. Current zoning is LMI. Proposed zone is Uptown UPT. The proposed use is mixed use. Parking lots LLC is the applicant. I propose that we approve this. Okay, we have a motion to accept. Do I have a second? Uh, we got plenty of seconds. Okay, all those in favor to accept this case, please raise your right hand and it's unanimous. Thank you very much. All right, that concludes our rezoning cases for today. We will move on to our special exceptions. We have two of those. And the first special exception case is EXCP 04210663. This is a request for special exception use at 1342 17th Street. Current zoning is RMF one, residential multifamily one, the proposed use is church, daycare, type three. Matt Stevens is the applicant. This property is located in Council District 7, Woodson, and we will hear from uh, planning first on this case. Yes, sir, this is a request for a daycare type three at a church. Um, access, 17th Street is a local road, Road Street is a local road. These roads will provide adequate free flow movement. 
Number two, traffic and pedestrian safe safety access into and out of the property in question will provide for adequate traffic and pedestrian safety and emergency as access. Adequacy of public facilities, services such as waters, utilities, police and fire protection, or adequate protection for adverse effects. The property is surrounded by GC, general commercial, RMF, one residential multifamily, one noise, light, glare, and odor should be limited due to the nature of the business. Our, the hours of operation for this will not have an adverse impact on the neighboring, the, the neighboring properties in the area. The structures and height size and location should match the uses found in other general commercial and residential multifamily one pro um, residential multifamily properties um, this is council district 7 90 property owners with 300 within 300 feet of the property have been notified by mail of the proposed special exception use the planning department received no calls in or emails regarding the rezoning thank thank you mr renfro uh, commissioners do you have any questions mr renfro all right, and is Mr. Matt Stevens here? Please come up and give us your name and address for the record. I know this church historically was a daycare center years yes, sir. ago. Yes, That's okay. right. That's exactly right. Matt Stevens, um, 1232 uh, Double Churches. Um, yeah, I'm the pastor of the Fort Church, and uh, you're right. The building was originally built to be a daycare and was a, a thriving daycare in that community for some time. As the church declined and the neighborhood changed, um, the daycare was shut down. I, my understanding is that sometime in that between time when we got there, I guess the zoning changed. That's why we're here for this special exception. Our desire as the Fort Church, we partnered with Eastern Heights at, as it had declined. Our, our mission is simply stated, revive and restore. We want to, wherever we go, we want to bring that place um, to a, a better place than it was. And, and that's true for the community there where we are. And uh, we've had great success there at uh, as we've, uh, worked on the facilities, renovated facilities. We've poured hundreds of thousand of dollars uh, in volunteer man hours into it, and we'll continue. And this is the next step in us revitalizing that property and bringing it back to uh, being a real service to the community. We want to provide um, high quality and affordable uh, daycare and Christian early, early learning um, to the community. And so, yeah, that's uh, we're, we're really excited about it. We're really excited about reopening the daycare there. How many students do you anticipate or are you allowed? Approximately to? 80 uh, once you, at full capacity, you know, it's going to, it'll stage up for sure. So. Okay. All right. Is there any questions from the commission for Pastor Stevens here? Anyone? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, is there anyone in the audience that would like to come speak for this case? Please come forward at this time. Yes, sir, please state your name and address for the record. My name is Will Bergen. I live at 2120 Country Club Road. My office is at 1313 Road Street, which is on the other side of the block from the church. I just was coming to speak in favor of it. I love to see the additional activity going on in that building. I love to see what the church has done for our area, um, and I want to encourage them to keep it up. And if this is a part of their plan, then I want to be on the record uh, to supporting that. Well, thank you very much. All right. <clears throat> Questions, commissioners? Thank you, Mr. Bergen. Does anyone else like to come speak for this case? Come, uh, come forward at this time. Does anyone in the audience like to speak against this case? Please come forward at this time. And please state your name and address for the record. Good morning. Carol Beasley is my name. I live at 1431 16th Avenue. Um, my son and I own rental property on roads that will be directly facing this um, daycare and also that faces the church. Um, we own 1315 roads, 1348 roads, 1344 roads, 1352 roads, and 1360 roads. And those are duplexes or triplexes. Um, I'm not really speaking against this project as much as I am concerned that um, for our tenants and for our investment that um, the traffic and the noise is 
um, controlled or modified as much as possible. Um, I have been um, to the church um, parking lot where it's been, um, a, where apparently the all of the traffic um, going into the daycare is going to feed off of Rhodes Street. That concerns me that there's going to be, um, you know, 80 cars in the morning, 80 cars in the afternoon, possibly along that residential street. Um, and also my other concern is that the um, playground for this daycare center is going to be um, facing the property that we own. And I would like to, um, as I said, I'm not really against this, but I would like to um, possibly see some plans for some landscaping or some fencing that would um, alleviate, you know, the, the um, any kind of, of um, eyesore that there would be from, and also to absorb noise from the playground. Okay. Our tenants are older. We have some, um, some army vets that are in those little apartments that you know, have post-traumatic stress syndrome, and I just, I'm concerned about the noise, the traffic, the foot traffic, the, um, um, the noise from the, the playground. Even though I applaud the church and what they're doing in that neighborhood is wonderful. All right. Okay. Commissioners, do y'all have any questions of Mr. Beasley? <clears throat> Anyone? Thank All right. You. Yes, uh, Ms. Thomas has a question. Okay, you're asking for conditions? Concerning. I suppose I am uh, in, in terms of along that playground area and also maybe the traffic flow to study that a little bit more. Okay, thank you. And, I, you know, I'm also curious as to whether um, parents are going to be parking and taking their children in or whether there's going to be a line of traffic down roads that is going to be waiting, um, you know, for drop-off and for pickup. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Renfro, did you have a quick I comment? just wanted to comment the, the traffic report that we generated for this. The church itself is going to generate 230 trips. The daycare is going to be 501. Um, this is projected off of having 300 students. So it's going to be way less than that initially, um, just for reference for okay. the commissioners. And that right. 500 trips is daily or weekly? That would be daily. Daily. Uh, for clarification, they will not be able to use roads for stacking, um, for pickup or drop off or anything because it is a local street, and that is technically a commercial use. Seventeenth is a collector, so everything will need to come off of Seventeenth uh, and possibly Fourteenth, because Fourteenth is more or less uh, a collector between. 13th uh, Street and 17th. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Is there anyone else in the audience like to speak against this case or have any other comments? Pastor Stevens, have y'all uh, thought about traffic and what you plan to do? Uh, yeah, our anticipation is that the the size of the parking lot and, and the flow of traffic shouldn't shouldn't be a problem, but we want to be very good neighbors. That's that's our goal there, and so um, we we don't anticipate there being a, an issue. Uh, so, yeah. I don't. Well, I mean, you understand about you can't stack on right. Roads, yeah, yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. And we'll make and, sure uh, we do not do that. Yeah. You know, possibly putting some type of buffer up between the plan. I know what the playground is. I did ride over there and. Yeah, so we everything that we do. We hope improves the property and improves the neighborhood. And so um, we don't know exactly what type of fencing right now. We uh, It's still in the plans. We thought it was going to be a uh, privacy fence with the price of woods changing things. So, um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But, uh, you know, our goal, and hopefully our neighbors have seen that since we've been there, has just been to improve the property, improve the neighborhood, even trying to improve properties around ours that, that you know. So we want to be very good neighbors. I understand. Yep. All right. Thank you. All right. Commissioners, y'all have any other questions? No other questions? No one else wants to come up and speak? Uh, open the floor up for a motion regarding this special exception case, please. I make, <coughs> excuse me, I make a motion to approve EXCP 04 21 
a request for special exception use at 1342 17th Street. Current zoning is RMF1, residential multifamily. The proposed use is church daycare type three. Matt Stevens is the applicant. Um, I recommend to approve based on the proposed use is, in, is compatible with the existing land use. All right. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? And we have a second. All those in favor to approve this special exception, raise your right hand. And it's unanimous. Thank you very much. All right. Our, well, I think I have put my agenda over here. All right. Last special exception here for the day is EXCP 04210766, a request for special exception use at 375 Far Road. Current zoning is GC, General Commercial. The proposed use is church, greater than 250 seats. Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church is the applicant. This property is located in Council District 3, Mr. Huff. And we'll hear from uh, the planning department first on this special exception. Yes, sir. This is a request for a church to have greater than 250 seats. Number one, access. Far Drive is a local road. Far Road is a local road. These roads will provide adequate free flow movement, traffic and pedestrian safety. Access into and out of the property in question will provide for adequate traffic and pedestrian safety and emergency access, adequacy of public facilities, services such as water, utilities, police, and fire are adequate, protection from adverse effects. The property is surrounded by G general commercial, RMF2, residential multifamily two. Noise, light, glare, and odor should be limited due to the nature of the business. The hours of operation for this will not have an adverse impact on the neighboring properties in the area. Number six is compatibility. The structure, height, site, and location should match the uses found in other general commercial residential multifamily two properties. Council District 3 Huff, um, 30 property owners within 300 feet of the property have been notified by mail of the proposed uh, special exception use. The planning department did receive one phone call um, in, regarding this rezoning. It wasn't in opposition or approval, it was more of an inquiry. Okay. All right, commissioners, y'all have any questions of Mr. Renfro regarding this special exception case? Anyone? All right. Uh, who is going to come speak on behalf of Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church? And if you would, please uh, state your name and uh, an address for the record and tell us what your plans are, please. Good morning to everyone. My name is David Stallion. I am the senior pastor of Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church. I currently live at 5365 Westwood Drive, Columbus, Georgia. Uh, basically, we are here because we are uh, trying to help the city to better our community, uh, our area where in which we are currently located at uh, 4400 Old Casita Road. Uh, we've been there for over 100 years, and the city and the state uh, deal, uh, Georgia Department of Transportation, uh, put together a plan to put an interchange uh, that will come off of 185 uh, down to Oak Cedar Road, where we are currently located, and that particular plan uh, would mean that the church would have to relocate. Uh, the current property uh, that we're now discussing is 375 Far Road. Uh, it's property that the city and the church came together in agreement that that would be a new home for the church. Uh, upon us going through the process of uh, finalizing all transactions with the city and so forth so that we would have uh, another place to go, uh, it was determined that the current zoning will only allow a church that seats 250 people or less. And so we're asking for that special uh, exception that we are able to build the church that will seat over the 250 people. And so it's currently zoned as general commercial. We're asking that it be zoned church um, with over 250 people. Just out of curiosity, how many are you planning to build there? It's actually close to 500 seats. Oh, good. Yeah. I hope you get, get them all filled. Um, all right. Commissioners, y'all have any questions of Pastor Stallion? Anyone? 
Yes, ma'am. Ms. Thomas. Pastor, you're right there on the corner, right? Uh, Far Road and where that turn in at. I know it used to be a kind of a bad area for accidents. Would there be a red light or something there to kind of help out with the uh, traffic? Because I know, I think one person did either get killed or get hurt making the left turn going into that area. And I'm just wondering, you know, because I know your staff and your church members going to be a lot, and I'm just concerned about the traffic going. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let ask on. <laughs> I'm a little bit ahead of you, sorry. <laughs> Bruce South Council District 3, uh, P.O. Box 1340, Columbus, Georgia, uh, 31902. This has been a project ongoing now for about five years. Um, there will be a traffic, let me first address your question. Uh, there will be talks and plans to put a traffic light there to get people in and out. That is right now no left turn and it will be nothing but T-bone accidents for people to try to make that turn to get in there. So we are going to look into that. But just to let the board understand, the commission understand what's really going on. Mount Pilgrim was approached probably, I guess, as far back as, Mr. Johnson, you know, 2005 or earlier. 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 About this project. And Georgia Department of Transportation wanted it to happen, and it did not happen. So in the t vote in 2012, this was one of the projects on the list. It's a $58 million project to put exit ramps, on-off ramps there at Old Casita Road and uh, Far Road. So we started working with the church. Uh, Pastor Harris had been there since 1951 at the time. And he retired about, I think it was 2015. Uh, Pastor Stallion came in in 2015. We've been working with Pastor Stallion and his uh, board, the deacons and everyone. And this has been a real good relationship. All businesses in the area will not be affected at all. Everybody will be grandfathered in if there's, I think there's a F and W control tower and other businesses in the area. No one will be affected. No new ones will be able to come in under the zoning, but the, uh, reason they're here this morning is Mount Pilgrim right now seats around 500 people, five to 600 people. So in negotiating this out with Mount Pilgrim and the Georgia Department of Transportation, our planning department and city manager and everyone, we discovered after the fact that we had agreed on everything, that they were limited to less than 250, which is less than what they have now. Uh, they are very good stewards in the community it allows the uh, members to only have to drive now maybe an additional two minutes from where they're used to arriving on Sundays and all during the week. They do a lot of work in the community as far as feeding the hungry and other activities with the kids and everyone. So uh, I just ask that you uh, approve this going forward and to understand that for the betterment of, the, of Columbus, Georgia, this has been ongoing for quite a few years. Uh, there's a new football stadium being built with the school district now that's about two minutes from the exit. So it's going to allow economic development and should be ease of use in the community. We hadn't had any complaints. And I just wanted to make sure uh, I saw uh, my friend, Mr. Washington, here this morning to let him know it won't affect his club and business at all going forward. Uh, because I've frequented that over the years uh, from the time I was 21 or so years old and uh, been to weddings and other activities there. So, so far, it's been a, it's been, it's been a good run. Uh, Pastor Stallion and his group has been very easy to work with. And they had the opportunity probably within a couple of months ago that DOT gave them the option to stay where they are if they were not happy and they chose to move forward with this for the betterment of the city. So I ask that you approve this this morning. Thank you. Mr. Huff, I, I do have one quick question. Yes, sir. What is the uh, GDOT's timeline on this project? Do you have any idea? The timeline is they'll get, they, they are working right now on the right of way. Yeah, acquisition of right of way, that's going on right now. Uh, they have uh, worked out a deal with the church that they can stay until they uh, actually need to, when is that? 
May 30th, 2022, that they can stay up until that point uh, that they need to demolish the church and move forward. Okay. Um, it will be, if I remember correctly, uh, this is the last project on the list. So I'm thinking completion is probably gonna be what, three, four years out? Yeah, okay. about three or four years out because we're working right now on the diamond at University Road and the bridge at uh, Spiderweb over the railroad crossing. So those will complete out first and then the last one will be uh, the one at, uh, one, one, I-185 exchange. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, commissioners, y'all have any questions before he walks away? Anyone? All right, thank you. All right, anyone in the audience like to come forward and speak for this case, please do so. And if you would please state your name for the record and your address. <laughs> Hi, my name that. is Aretha Richards and I'm the community manager of Farfield Manor Senior Apartments located at 419 Far Road. And we will actually be the neighbors of the church. Um, the church, like he says, has been in the area 100 years. I was raised here in Columbus. I'm very familiar with this church. Um, being at Farfield Manor for the, net, for the last 14 years, they have been a part of our community within our seniors, um, helping us Christmas time whenever we need, because they're a part of the community. They are, part, they are a part of the family that is in that area. Um, and we are a family in that area. Um, a lot of people have a stigma with when you say far road, but it's not the far road that was 40 years ago. It's not even the far road that was 10 years ago. Um, and I encourage it. I welcome it. I welcome them being our neighbor for many different reasons. But one is because I have 74 residents who this past, what, 18 months, 12 months, have suffered um, isolation. And that isolation has hurt them mentally, physically, emotionally. And having a church next door who literally they can walk up a hill and get what they need, because many of our residents can't go to church or, or we bring church into them because they don't have transportation or their health hinders their ability to get that spiritual guidance that they need. Um, and that type of community and that type of neighbor hits you in all different levels, especially when you're 62 or older and a majority of your time is spent isolated, um, even though our efforts are to, to bring in services and bring in things. But when you've had something that's hit them this like the past 12 months, the isolation can kill. And having a neighbor like that is what we need. And the ability for them to be able to walk up the hill versus walk down you know, half a mile to where they are now is nothing but a benefit to us and a blessing. Um, I did have the same concerns that you had because of the traffic that comes down that hill. It may say 25 miles an hour, but they don't do 25 miles an hour. <laughs> um, we do have sidewalks, but our residents have to cross a street where they're coming down a hill and then there's a blind spot with a curve. Um, so we need, when, when this is done, we need your help with either getting a crosswalk or additional sidewalks or a caution light or a stoplight, something that will make it safe for not only our seniors, but the children that walk up and down that street, the young people that walk up and down that street. Um, so again, I encourage it, I welcome it, I can't wait to work with them and our seniors, but as, as Columbus and, and as what y'all do, I really need y'all to take a look at the traffic, I need you to look at the safety concerns when you've got people trying to cross a road in a walker, in a motorized chair with a cane, and you've got people literally doing 50 miles an hour down a hill or coming around a corner. That's all I ask is for y'all to consider that. Um, and we welcome the church. I'm excited. Um, uh, Councilman Huff has been in our community, <laughs> what, four or five times a year <laughs> for the last 14 years. So, again, thank you for this. We, we greatly appreciate it. We greatly welcome it. But I do ask that you consider the traffic and the safety issues. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. Uh, regarding Far Road, as you can imagine, as I'm sure all of y'all have been down Far Road, Far Road is pretty much where an interchange will be. It will be greatly altered when this project is done. And I'm sure we will look at the full length of Forest Road as it goes up towards St. Mary's, 
but it will be significantly altered and if I'm not mistaken, um, shifted to the south or shifted to the east, to the east I believe. Um, because that interchange has got to go pretty much where half of the southern end of it comes down. Okay. So there will be significant alterations to Far Road. All right. And we will take these into consideration in the northern end. Got you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. All right. Any other questions? Commissioners, anybody? Okay. All right. I said, is there anyone else like to speak for this case? Does anyone like to speak against this case? Please come forward at this time. Please state your name and address for the record, sir. Floyd Washington, 414 Drive. And uh, I'm here concerned. I don't have no problem with the church being there. But what if I decide to sell my property you know, to the next guy that want to have a honky talk that will he be able to will we be able to continue? Operation that that like like Councillor Huff said, that property will be grandfathered in moving oh, okay. forward for any type of distance requirements that may or may not be imposed on it. Um, so if you sell that property to someone and you still hold hold that business license, you can sell it directly to them and they can continue to use use that property as its current use moving forward. I'm all right. Does that answer your question, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Anyone else in the audience like to speak for or against this? Please come forward at this time. All right. That's it. I open the floor up for a motion. Yes, sir. Dr. McCaskey. When it comes to EXCP 04210766, a request for a special exception to use 375 Far Road. Current zone is GC, General Commercial. The proposed use is a church greater than 250 seats. Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church is the applicant. The property is located in City Council Bruce Huff. I propose that we approve this measure. All right, we have a motion to approve. We have a second from Mr. Derby. Uh, any discussion? All It would be 500, just as in the current church. All right, we do have a motion, and we have one question, but it's answered. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your right hand, and it's unanimous. Thank you very much. All right, well, thank you for your attention today. This concludes our cases for this date. It uh, looks like we have some cases on the 17th. Uh, we do. We currently have scheduled, I believe, four cases. Okay. And um, I hope you all can be there. Thank you again for your attention and your service here today. Uh, is there any new business we need to talk about? All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.